So in chapter four, we discover the various properties of the element carbon. We pay particular attention to the types of bonds and the varieties of molecules carbon can form, not only with itself, but with other atoms as well. Carbon in general has four valence outer shell electrons. It can form up to a maximum of four bonds. The type of bonds that carbon can form are known as single, double, and triple bonds. Um, the example here below is of ethylene or ethene. The ETH prefix means two, and the E and E extension indicates the double bond nature of the molecule. Um, here you have acetylene, acetyl meaning three, all of which display these properties of carbon. It is generally this valence electron characteristic that allows carbon to produce a variety of polymers, which we will see in the next slide. Here we see a variety of organic hydrophobic polymers, organic indicating that they are made with the backbone element of carbon. They range from ethane, propane, butene, and butane, like in butane lighters. Uh, both ethane and propane are single bonded molecules. Butene are double bonded molecules. And butane exhibits sort of the branching of bonds. And the aromatic rings here are found in both cyclohexane and benzene. In this diagram, we see the isomeric forms of carbon. There are three major categories of isomeric forms of carbon. Uh, the first of which are the geometric isomers, which vary in their three-dimensional spatial arrangement. Uh, the second type are the structural isomers, which vary in the actual bonding configuration. And then finally, we have uh, stereoisomers, also known as enantiomers, and these vary in their arrangement around uh, an asymmetric carbon atom. This diagram here shows the first isomeric type of carbon. On the left here we see a cis isomer represented by the two functional um, X groups located on the same face as the double bond. On the right we see a trans isomer which has its functional groups located on the up opposite sides of the double bonded carbons. Structural isomers here are illustrated by pentane and 2-methylbutane. Uh, these two are differentiated by their varied order of covalent bond configurations. Here we see enantiomers. In these, we know we differ in their stereoscopic organization of atoms um, around the asymmetric uh, carbon atom. So they will come in two varieties, usually either the L or D isomers. Now here we're looking at uh, our seven chemical groups that are the most significant in biology. Uh, they are the following, hydroxyl, carbonyl, carboxyl, amino, sulfhydryl, uh, phosphate, and the methyl uh, groups. Of these, only uh, the methyl groups are not considered a functional group as it does not participate in chemical reactions, but instead functions as a tag uh, on biological molecules such as DNA. Let's take a look at our first functional group. This is hydroxyl, um, symbolized by the O8 extension. These are organic compounds, which are typically classified as alcohols. The chemical names of these compounds end in an OL, such as ethanol. The carbonyl groups are represented by a C double bonded O group, where if the C double bonded O is found at the end of a molecule, it's called an aldehyde and ends in an AL. And if the C double bonded O is located in the center of the molecule, uh, it is known as a ketone, which ends in an ONE extension. The carboxyl groups are a double bonded O with an OH attachment to them. Uh, these compounds are considered acids, such as uh, fatty or amino acids. Other known examples of these acids are also um, acetic acid, also known as vinegar. 
uh, this molecule also serves as the carboxy terminal of DNA required uh, for a peptide bond. The amino functional groups here have a nitrogen atom attached to two or three hydrogen atoms. These compounds are typically referred to as amines, where the NH2 picks up an H plus from solution and is what generates the amino terminal um, of amino acids required for a peptide bond. The sulfhydryl groups typically provide strength to a molecule by way of the disulfide bridges seen here that after uh, the sort of dehydration reactions from the initial sulfhydro groups will form these uh, sort of sulfur to sulfur disulfide bridge groups. Uh, people with curly hair tend to have many of these disulfide bridges to hold the uh, curls. Finally, we come to our phosphate group and the phosphate functional group is of course of great importance um, as it serves an energy transfer between organic molecules in the compounds of ATP, GTP, um, AMP, cyclic AMP, etc. Um, there's generally only one phosphate atom connected to four oxygen atoms, one of which is a double bond. This distinct characteristic is what generates phosphate's highly reactive uh, negative charge. Okay, so that's it for chapter four. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask uh, either through email or in person.